Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago and today I'm going to be taking a look at the mod case for the Rogue Ally from Handheld DIY. So they sent over this backplate, it's, I mean, the back shell of the Rogue Ally but in a different color with better heat dissipation, so we're going to be taking a look at that. Thanks to Handheld DIY for sending this over for review. As always, our opinions are my own, so full transparency. So let's get into it. Once you get the box, you get the actual mod case for the back of the Rogue Ally. Personally, I chose a transparent shell because I never had transparent technology and actually looks pretty cool. In the mod case itself, we have a kickstand, but then there's some tools that are included in the box, such as a prime tool, a screwdriver, extra screws in case you destroy the ones that you already have, some silicone tips for the back buttons, we're going to talk about that in a moment, and a strap to put a battery or something like that, or do silly stuff like I'm doing right now, pretending to be a hell diver. So in comparison to the stock back of the Rogue Ally, this is still plastic, of course. In that plastic, you have a very thin piece of metal that is going to be the one dissipating the heat. So it takes the heat to that metal and then the fans in the Rogue Ally itself are going to cool that down. That's how it should be in theory. And also the vents are way bigger than in the stock Rogue Ally. If you open it up, you'll see that there is very little space for air to get in. The build quality feels pretty good. It feels a little bit more flimsy than the one included in the Rogue Ally, but Again, that's going to be screwed into the back. But despite that, it felt pretty good on the back of the Rogue Ally. I didn't really like the texture of that plastic so much. In the stock Rogue Ally, there is like a texture printed in the back that feels better to grab. This is more like a soft plastic, which still feels pretty good, but not as grippy, which is a little bit of a disappointment personally. Not sure if it's because the case is clear, but that's immediately what I noticed when I tried it on the Rogue Ally. The installation is actually pretty simple, just removing the back of the Rogue Ally of a few screws with the included tools. After that, you just lift it, then remove the back button and the triggers. I had a little difficulty with the triggers because they have some magnets there for the triggers so that's one thing that i had a tiny little bit of difficulty with because one of the springs came off i had to enter to ifix it to see how the triggers actually work how the mechanism is but it was very simple to put back together then you also have to remove the back buttons in order to put them in the new case and there's a small issue when it comes to the back buttons Due to the difference in manufacturing of the shells of the ROG Ally itself, there's a difference of a few millimeters. So in some cases, the back buttons wouldn't touch as a button, they wouldn't work. So in order to fix that, they put a few tips that you put in the inside part that touches the button in the back. And depending on the ROG Ally model you have, it can be an error of 0.1 millimeters to 0.4, I think it was. Personally, I only had to use the 0.2 millimeters uh, silicone tips and the buttons worked just fine. So there was definitely a difference in thickness that needed to be accounted for. Other than that, it was just fine. And after all that, you just put it back together how it was with the same screws it came with. It was honestly a very simple process. The only thing that I recommend you do, so after screwing it in, make sure to unscrew it a tiny bit on the top screws because otherwise the shoulder buttons were stuck. That's something that I noticed when I was playing a game that the shoulder buttons were stuck. I unscrewed it a very tiny bit and it was okay. Maybe it's a little flex on the backplate itself but it works just fine after doing those very small adjustments. I was just <laughs> tightening them up too much. I think it adds a lot of personality seeing the inside of the technology that you're using. I always wanted to see it. And there's other color variations that I'm going to show you on screen right now. I chose transparent because that's the one that I never had. There's also by default a small metal piece that says handheld DIY. And if you pay some extra money, you can engrave it with whatever you want. In my case, I didn't want to do it. I just wanted the stock experience. So yeah, it looks pretty cool when it's so built and working properly. Again, pretty easy. I thought it was going to be a little bit more difficult when moving the buttons around and all that, but they also have a guide, a video guide on how to do it, which I highly recommend you follow. 
But again, it took me like less than 10 minutes. It was super easy when it comes to that. Just some adjustments when it comes to the bumpers. So it was just unscrewing it a little bit in order to adjust it. And also Handheld DIY says on their website that there is an improvement to temperature. So it improves performance as well. And well, I wanted to test that for myself. So I did a couple testing scenarios. I ran Cinebench R23, which is a CPU test. So Cinebench ran for around 10 minutes, just at full throttle on the CPU. Then I did that with the stock and the modded case. I did four runs on Wukong and on the fourth run, we take the frame rate from that one because there will be more heat. So the ally has to do some power management to get it all done. And after doing those tests, I was actually pretty impressed. In, in the items website, they say that there is a 16% improvement to performance on Cinebench. Well, after running 10 minutes of Cinebench using turbo mode, I went from 12,000 points to 13,000. So it was like a 6.8% increase with the modded backplate and a lower temperature. Then I run the same thing, but at 15 watts performance mode, because most people when they're not plugged into the wall are going to be using that mode. In that one, it was a 1.7% improvement on CPU performance. So 8,700 versus 8,800. I mean, a very, very small improvement there. But then when it came to Wukong, which is an Unreal Engine 5 game, super GPU intensive, at the 30 watt turbo mode, I went from 39 FPS with hidden 95 degrees basically across the board to 46 FPS average. So from an average of 39 FPS on the stock backplate to 46, so a 17.9% improvement. Then I did the same on the performance mode at 15 watts. We jumped from 29 FPS all the way up to 34, which is again a 17.2% increase. So when it comes to GPU performance, it really does make a difference, at least from what my testing shows. What I did notice was that the clock speed was higher across the board and the temperatures were around five degrees below what the stock settings did. Personally, I don't use 30 watts turbo mode. I'm more of a guy that does the 30 watts or 15 watts using the manual modes. That means that across the board, there will be lower temperatures because it doesn't boost to 40 something watts like in turbo mode, which is kind of crazy in my opinion. That's why the temperature can get so high. So when I'm doing consistent 30 watts manually or consistent 18 watts, but it doesn't lower the clock speed of the GPU like it does with the stock backplate. So it stays on a higher clock speed much longer. And at the same time, it runs a little bit cooler, which is appreciated. But again, on a GPU demanding test, I saw 17%, around 17% increase in performance using those settings. So it actually works. It does decrease the temperature because it has a lot more intake than the stock one. I also has that thin metal layer with the thick pad in the middle and that transfers heat as well. So you have a combination of more air coming in and more dissipation at the same time for a good price, at least in my opinion. So considering how easy it was to assemble the temperature improvements and the small increase in performance when using turbo mode, I think this is worth getting. You can have different colors. Personally, again, I went for transparent because I wanted to see how transparent tech look like, looks like in real life. But in my opinion, when it comes to build quality, it's okay, it's fine. It's just plastic with the metal backplate that actually cools the device using that thermal pad. The thing that I didn't like personally was, again, the texture of the backplate of the plastic it wasn't, it's just soft, it's not textured like on the stock rog ally, so there's less of a grip, at least in my opinion. It might not be a big deal for you. Personally, I mean, it's something I noticed right away, but it doesn't make it unplayable for me. I can still use the rog ally just fine. I also tried strapping in a 20,000 milliamp hour battery to the strap. It worked fine. It was a little bit heavy, but then I went a little bit overkill and tried a 30,000 million power battery and it was fine, but it was super heavy at that point, kind of unusable. And you need a short cable at 90 degrees to make it less of a 
very big device that looks like it's going to explode at any second. I mean, if you bring that to an airport, it's going to be a little bit sus. I mean, having that power bank with a few cables dangling around, well, that's something that I would keep in mind. Personally, I just wouldn't put that power bank in the back. I would just keep it like that. And one big issue that I had that is the reason why I removed the stand is that in my dock, it doesn't fit correctly. The stand just stays in the way of the dock, so I cannot dock it properly. But if that's an issue, do like I did and remove the stand and you'll have the stand in the box. It'll be fine on the dock. You can plug it in just fine. But overall, for $29.99, I would highly recommend it. There's a link in the description if you're interested. But I really like this. I'm going to keep it on the Rogue Ally. I'm going to keep links in the description so you guys can check it out. But let me know what you think. Personally, I think it's a must-have, considering how much cooler it looks in comparison to the stock backplate. Again, at least in my opinion. And the temperature decrease it is actually very, very noticeable. I didn't think it was going to be that good of an improvement, but it is. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did checking out this mod case. Again, link in the description if you're interested on checking it out. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you next time. Bye guys. Thanks for watching.